and welcome to another edition of the Health Research Report this 18th January 2013. We're going to cover three articles today, kind of short, but these are the only ones I can find kind of interesting. To start off with, fetal exposure to PVC chemical linked to obesity in offspring. Gets really good. Second, when the going gets tough, grape seed extract gets going. All right, three. Now, where did I put that Ebola? All pretty entertaining and pretty fun and pretty darn important. All right, first thing. Your diet should never include PVC. Why? Because your diet does include PVC or a chemical from PVC, known as tributylin. You're going to get fat, or I should say fatter than you should. But not only are you going to get fat, your generations after you are going to get fat. So what you do now is actually in effect not just your children, not just your grandchildren, but your great-grandchildren. And to head it off, this article was prepared on January 15th, Environmental Health Perspective Journal. Exposing pregnant mice to low doses of the chemical tributylin, which is used in marine hull paint and PVC plastic, also happens to be on the carpet that the children crawl on when young. It said, basically they said, saw increased body fat, liver fat, and fat-specific gene expression. Good way to alter your DNA and RNA, I guess. In children, grandchildren, and this is their quote, great-grandchildren. None, none of these descendants which have been exposed to the chemical that the one person once in their generation did. So yes, you do pay for your crimes or your sin of your ancestors, so to say, up to at least four generations. So, these findings suggest that early life exposure to endocrine disrupting compounds such as tributylin or TB BT have permanent effects on fat accumulation without further exposure. So when you do say you gain body fat is in your genes, now unfortunately you really can say it is in your genes because your ancestors or parents diet was a little bit more contaminated than they had anticipated. Significant levels of TBT tributylin from PVCs and such have been reported in house dust which particularly relevant since young children spend a specific, significant amount of time in floors and carpets. Some people are exposed to digesting seafood contaminated with TBT, which has been used in marine hull paint and is passive, or I should say not passive, I apologize, pervasive in the environment. Bloomberg, which is the researcher, categorized tributylin from PVC and such as a new class of compounds called obesogens. Obesogens are pretty under, easy to understand obesogen, meaning it's going to make you fat. Not the chemicals, not the lack of exercise, not all the million of other things you got to watch out for, but these things in PVCs. As classic chemicals that promote obesity by increasing the number of fat cells or storage of fat in the existing cells. So, when looking at something, see if you can at least avoid a little bit of PVC and keep it out of your diet one way or the other. Not only will your children benefit but children through generations to come will benefit. What an incredible way to increase the health of lineage for many decades to be. All right, when the going gets tough, grape seed extract gets going. This is a, was done by the University of Colorado Cancer Center. It was published in the Journal of Cancer Letters. Grape seed seems to be pretty darn effective when it comes to killing colon cancer cells. In fact, a lot of cancer cells. This should actually be a news article. It's obviously not conformist, it's not a drug, and people are not going to make a mint selling it. But however though, when you hear what I say, it beats the pants off of chemotherapy drugs. By far. It should be news. There's so much to put it in a news pool. So these boring news reporters can't figure out what to report upon, actually introduce it as news. This could actually save a life, probably many more lives than gun control or global warming and so on and so forth that they want to take up and debate as a distraction. Alright, here it goes. 
We've known for quite a while that the bioactive compounds in grapeseed extract selectively tar target many types of cancer cells. Again, published in the Journal of Cancer Letters. It what they found is the more aggressive the cancers become, the more grapeseed extract really begins to shine. It required less than half of the concentration of GCE or grapeseed extract to suppress growth and kill 50% of stage 4 cancer cells as opposed to stage 2. So what an incredible thing as an adjunct that an oncologist may recommend to improve the chances of survival and a better outcome for an individual that costs freaking nothing to pick up from a store. All right. They also discovered the mechanism of how GSE works. They believe that GSE, a grape seed extract, targets colorectal cancer cells through inducing oxidative stress, which leaves the program cell death nosoptosis. I can pronounce that properly. But it doesn't hurt good cells or normal cells or non-carcinogenic cells. Let's have chemotherapy say that or radiation therapy or whatever it is. Why not use something that's got no side effects? Who cares? Save a life. Says basically a colorectal cancer cells can have up to 11,000 genetic mutations. Differences from DNA in healthy cells. Traditional chemotherapies may only specific target a specific mutation. That's one out of 11 and a lot of, lot of zeros. Says chemotherapies may only target a specific mutation as cancer progresses, more mutations occur which is really where the grape seed extract begins to shine. These changes can result in cancer that is resistant to chemotherapy. Duh. All right. In contrast, the many bioactive compounds of GSC, grape seed extract, are able to target multiple mutations, not just one, but like lots. The, the more, more mutations a cancer presents, the more effective grape seed extract is in targeting them. And this was published, or I should say, not published. The research was funded by the National Institute of Health. And this is really good news. There are things you can do on your own to help with your prognosis. If you're not certain, look up the data, look up the footnotes, and present it to your oncologist or whoever is helping you fight off whatever this colorectal cancer or cancer is. If you got well-documented data, not something you just hear from hype on the internet or whatever it comes down to be, but actually documented footnoted data that can be traced, verified, and duplicated. This is good things to bring to the attention of basically your medical professional who's trying to basically help you. See what happens. It can't hurt. If they don't listen, ask them why. It beats a lot of lucky foot mentality when it just comes to the Willow West theory of chemotherapy on its own. This kicks butt. All right, now one of my other favorite articles articles. Now, where did I put that Ebola? I like the headline because it means these researchers got a sense of humor, which if they're not so stocked up, means the research tends to be a little bit better, or I should say open-minded. Now, this came down to basically the Centers for Disease Control did one of its first studies at looking at pathogens at bio-level or biohazard laboratories, which are about 300 across the United States. And this is printed in what's called Applied Biosafety. And they discovered that there are only, out of many cases, 639 inadvertent releases of pathogens between 2004 and 2010. Pathogen being SARS, Ebola, I'm just going down the list, anthrax, da 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 da, da down the line. Which, you got to admit, 639 over the number of years is actually pretty good, but at the same time, it's kind of disturbing. So they've been doing their job well but it's impossible to maintain perfection. All right. And there's only been 1.6 infections per 10,000 workers, which normally you think a bio-level harvester facility would be none. But obviously, they have a little bit of problem. According to their words, uh, they found out that a lot of these problems came from aerosol versions of these bacteria, which could be weapon-grade and so on and so forth. So screwing around the weapon-grade stuff seems to basically make the pathogen more pervasive and easy to stick to things unbeknownst to the poor bio-level hazard employee.
See, the infections could not be linked to obvious breaches in personal protection, such as torn gloves or cuts from sharp objects. Instead, the authors suggest that workers probably acquired the infection from the release of aerosols containing the harmful agents. So you know what to stay away from. The bottom line is we've had a lot of success to report. Now, again, they did a really good job, but still releases suck because it only takes one to screw up an entire planet. If you consider that it's a program that regulates over 300 laboratories across the United States. So current regulations date back to the counterterrorism legislation in the wake of the 2001 anthrax attack, which just happened to be from a biohazard lab worker. It says a Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, inquiry concluded that the microbiologist, Bruce Ivins, who worked at a government biodefense laboratory, was responsible for mailing anthrax spores that killed five people and six and six and 17 others. You can't have everything perfect, but it does mean that it can be compromised. Now, keep in mind, too, I don't know if they're including little things like, for example, remember Baxter Laboratories when they were selling, uh, selling, well, actually, they do sell. Uh, avian flu infected ferrets to Czechoslovakia, but it was, oh, it was a mistake. We didn't mean to do that. Or other times when people left vials of biohazards and flus and viruses, um, highly contagious, left on subway cars in Europe during the same time. Or mixing up vaccine containers and actually having active uh, viral components in the vaccine, so on and so forth. You hear about these things all the time. I don't know if it's included in the CDC report, uh, basically releasing the applied biosafety. But it's something to keep in mind. Otherwise, again, 639 sounds like a disturbing number and is a disturbing number. They did a good job, but it only takes one. And I hope by the next report, they do a lot better. All right. Thank you very much for watching this health research report. This 18th of January, 2013. And remember, stay away from people that use aerosols and bacteria. Two, you want to stay skinny. And generations of your descendants to stay skinny. Stay away from PVCs or TBD or tributylin. And three, if you know anybody that's got cancer, especially colorectal cancer, why don't you check out grape seed extract. And not to be confused with grapefruit seed extract. 50% of stage 4 cancer cells get killed by it. And it seems to work with genetic mutations up to 11,000 different ones. Where your chemo drugs only work with one and don't seem to have anywhere near the same effectiveness, so why not? All right, guys, thank you very much, and I'll catch you as usual next Friday. See you in a bit.